have muscles like that. Those? You can totally have them. But how? I don't have time to build those. Neither do I. So how'd you build those muscles? Well... helping you fit fitness even to the busiest of lives. Be sure to check out our other playlists for more videos you'll enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that you never ever miss our videos. But for today, we're talking about building muscle for ordinary people. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, as you've probably seen on this channel, we really like to promote the idea that fitness and health goals can be for anyone, even the average person who doesn't spend all day in the gym. And that can include so many different things. It can include aesthetic goals. So obviously building muscle and losing fat. It can also include athletic goals. So things like improving your performance in the activities that you love. And obviously it includes general health goals. So feeling better and having more energy and sleeping better and having less aches and pains and just an overall better quality and longevity in life. So what we're gonna do today is give you some tips and tricks that worked for us despite having really busy lifestyles with a nine to five sedentary job, family obligations, school and friendships, all that is a lot of stuff. And one of the things we really want to emphasize is to reach those muscle building goals that you want to achieve, you don't necessarily have to change your whole lifestyle. It doesn't mean having to live in the gym every day and take steroids and take supplements. No, achieving these muscle gains is possible for everyone, even our extraordinary athletes. So in this video, we're going to cover the following. Number one, the three mechanisms of hypertrophy. First, mechanical tension. Second, muscle damage. And third, metabolic stress. And number two, our personal muscle building tips. So for me, it's gonna be about frequency. For Kat, it's gonna be all about hard effort. And for Al, it's gonna be about proper muscle activation. So first we're gonna discuss the most well-known way of building muscle and achieving hypertrophy, and that is mechanical tension. Now this refers to the tension placed on your muscle fibers as you apply a stimulus. The idea is that you wanna generate large muscle force with a full range of motion on your muscles. But that doesn't mean go and lift as heavy as possible because that implies a one rep max. Now we recommend to focus on time under tension. For hypertrophy, pick a lighter, more moderate weight than your one rep max, but make sure it's still significant, and then focus on increasing the time your muscle is under tension. So here's where you'll start hearing people talk about progressive overload. Now the principle of progressive overload states that in order to get your body to keep making those muscular gains, you need to keep introducing new levels of tension to it that it hasn't previously experienced. So the most typical way people will try to achieve progressive overload is simply by increasing the load or the weight or the resistance on a particular exercise that they're doing. So for example, if you're doing a bench press, you might increase your weights by adding plates every so often in order to achieve this progressive overload. Note that while this might be the most obvious way that most people try to achieve progressive overload, it's not the only way to do so. And in fact, this way of just increasing the load on a particular exercise might be the one that's most likely to lead you to plateau, where you find you can't make those gains anymore and even just adding a tiny little bit of weight to that exercise, a bench press for instance, becomes really, really challenging. And this point's really important for anyone who seems to find that they reach a plateau and stop seeing those gains, and maybe you're on one of those plateaus right now. And the idea is that you have to find different ways to stimulate your muscles in order to overload them. Other tactics may include varying the tempo of your reps and thus playing with your time under tension, varying the exercises themselves, changing rest periods, playing with the strength curves, changing the order in which you perform the exercises, and incorporating other types of workout techniques, even ones that are less associated with hypertrophy, like explosive training. We're actually thinking of making a video specifically dedicated to the different ways you can reach progressive overload. So if you want to see that, let us know in the comments below. 
The second mechanism by which we traditionally thought to build muscle is by creating muscle damage. This refers to the microscopic damage to the muscles that you're exercising. And it is this type of damage that is the responsible for the long-term soreness that you may feel after workout. The most typical way in which to achieve muscle damage is to focus on the eccentric part of your lifts. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, there are three types of muscle contractions. There's the concentric, isometric and eccentric. Concentric contractions are those where the muscle shortens against resistance. This would, for instance, include curling up a dumbbell during a bicep curl or pressing the bar away from your chest while benching. Isometric contraction is when the muscle neither shortens nor lengthens while under tension. So an example of that would be doing a static squat or doing a plank. As you may have guessed by now, the eccentric contraction is when the muscle lengthens while under tension. So an example of that would be lowering the weight during a bicep curl or lowering the bar while doing a bench press. The idea of eliciting muscle damage is to focus on the eccentric part of each rep. Don't just let that weight drop, but instead gradually resist throughout. Before wrapping up muscle damage though, we should point out that there have been recently some challenges to the idea that muscle damage is causally connected to hypertrophy. And there are arguments on both sides that warrant consideration, but that's a topic for a different video. Now the third mechanism for hypertrophy is metabolic stress. This refers to when you're training a muscle in an anaerobic manner, which induces the accumulation of metabolites such as lactate. This results in cell swelling, which gives you both that pump look and feel while you're exercising. It also burns like hell, so be mindful of that. A recent study actually looked at the different methods by which you can maximize metabolic stress during exercise. These included making changes to your training intensity, volume, the rest between sets, and playing with different types of training such as low intensity resistance training with blood flow restriction and high intensity interval training. T Nation actually has a really good article discussing this and they point out that the key is to keep constant tension on the muscles by maintaining a continuous cadence, no rest between reps, and reversing direction just short of lockout or just before bottoming out, depending on the exercise's strength curves. Okay, so how do we accomplish this? Well, it depends on the exercise we're talking about. For a bicep curl, for instance, you could be using resistance bands and stopping just short of a full range of motion to really get that burn feeling. For something like squats though, it actually involves you just stopping short of a complete lockout at the end of the concentric portion of the rep and going right back down into your next rep. You can even utilize other tactics that can help you even further increase the metabolic stress. So continuing with the squat idea, you can start using pauses at the end of each rep or even start incorporating pulses as well. But note, these will really start to burn and you'll feel it. So in short, if you're looking to maximize your metabolic stress, definitely be considering your tempo throughout your rep and set schemes. So that's the academic answer to how to technically build muscle. But what about us? We each have our own personal tip about what helped us when we first started. And they're all different. And we were all gunning for different things when we began building muscle as well. For Arata, she was trying to make more gains on her glutes. For me, I wanted to build some mass on those biceps. For Kat, she was trying to grow in strength and size. Everywhere! Everywhere! So we're gonna share our personal stories and our personal tips for how we made our muscles grow. So let's talk about frequency. For me personally, the key that I noticed that helped me build muscle was frequency of workouts. So instead of hitting my legs and glutes once a week, I hit them two to three times a week, depending on soreness. So when I was in high school, I was very active. I was involved in track and field, in hockey, in badminton teams, and I was used to the schedule where every day I would have some kind of activity either before school or after school that was very physical. So then I graduated high school and went to university and had to kiss goodbye to all of my high school sports. And I really missed them because I was used to the frequency. I was used to working out Monday to Friday, you know, with my field hockey, with my volleyball, with track and field. 
Now I didn't have that anymore and I had to find something that worked for me. And what worked for me was doing full body workouts in between classes and that perfectly fit into my personal schedule during university. And then after graduation, I just kept it up. The benefits of this type of workouts are not anecdotal. Much research has shown that frequency can reign supreme in building muscle. So instead of obliterating that muscle and then not coming back to it for a week or more, you're better off going a little easier, which is going to limit the amount of DOMS that you feel and also help you hit that muscle more frequently. This helps maximize muscle protein synthesis and can get you those extra results. So if you've been plateauing and you've been doing something like a bro split, definitely consider a frequency change up. What worked for me is hard effort, but a lot of people at the gym, they're not putting in their maximal effort. They do one minute of an exercise and then they take a four to five minute break. That's not good. One guy at my gym would even take naps. He would sit at the leg press machine and then close his eyes and go to La La Land. It's important to test your limits and try to move past them. Don't be afraid of that burn. Don't stop working out. You don't wanna just coast through your workout. Instead, just as Jeff Cavalier says, you wanna make sure you do one thing. Start becoming comfortable being uncomfortable. Now this doesn't mean that bad form is acceptable. This doesn't mean that you're gonna be doing things that you shouldn't be doing. But let's be honest, have you put in the maximal effort you could for today? Anyone can do easy sets and reps, but it's in those moments when things get really tough and you decide to push through them, that's where the gains are made. Now my favorite thing at the gym is when I get a really heavy weight and I'm pushing and it doesn't look like it's gonna go anywhere and then I'm able to push through and I get that adrenaline rush, that is the sweet spot. Now some people may mention the perils of overtraining. And yeah, that is a real thing and it can be very taxing on your nervous system. We'll cover that in another video. But let's be honest, a lot of us, especially beginners, they're not at risk of overtraining. In fact, overtraining is very rare and it's definitely not something I've ever experienced when I train hard. Uh, are you sure about that? Uh, all right, let's add five more. Kat, this is already your 20th set. So? That wasn't overtraining. And the point remains. Don't be so scared of overtraining that you forget to challenge and push yourself over your limits. Do not leave any extra sets or reps on the table because those are wasted opportunities for gains. And no expert, no trainer, no YouTuber can be a better judge than yourself of whether you put in the maximal effort. Okay, so the tip that worked best for me was focusing on proper mind-muscle connection and activating the correct muscles. This involves ensuring that you're contracting the correct muscles you're trying to exercise during your set, really squeezing those muscles on every rep. Learn how to activate that muscle properly. Don't just be moving the weight through space, but actually be focusing on which muscles you intend on moving that weight. And this was actually pretty big for me. But back in high school, I was working out a bit and I was seeing very little progress. And I think my main problem was an inability to activate the correct muscles. So years later, when I developed a better understanding and education for this stuff and came back to my own training, I really focused on that mind-muscle connection. And it made a world of difference. So let's look at an example. Take a look at this bicep curl, for instance. What is it that you're noticing? Take a look at all the mistakes I'm making here. First off, my range of motion is poor. I'm utilizing a bit too much momentum and I'm bringing in other muscles to this exercise. My tempo is a bit too quick and I'm not focusing on squeezing my biceps at all. Now take a look at this same bicep curl exercise, but performed a bit differently. Notice the differences here. I'm not allowing any energy to leak out. 
my full focus is on contracting my biceps. I'm trying to make my biceps here do as much of the work as is possible, and I'm squeezing the hell out of them, and looking for as maximum of a contraction as possible, which is why you start to see in this version my wrists or forearms supinating here on every single rep. So that example was a bicep curl, but this tip applies to any muscle that you're working on. One of the most obvious places where I see this mistake is actually with the exercise tricep pushdown. Really focus on maximizing your tricep contraction when you're doing this. I'm sure you've seen this in the gym a lot, where someone will put on a weight that's way too heavy of a load, stand over the rope or bar or whatever they're using, and as they're standing over it, just partial rep as they're doing their tricep pushdown, but what they're doing here is actually recruiting a lot of chest, really minimizing the contraction of their triceps, and you're not doing yourself a service when you're doing something like that. So have some thought and some intention behind each rep that you're doing, and watch those gains start to flow in. And if you like this video, be sure to share it with any friends who could use a comprehensive overview of hypertrophy. And don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button. Also check out our affiliate links. Hope this video helped you build some added muscle. Happy lifting, everyone. Bye. Bye.